Let's now consider an entirely different experimental situation where in fact we can use the exact same test statistic. This is a dependent measures design, a design where we measure people twice. For this example, we'll be using the one group blood pressure example data set that's in the module journal. In this data set, we have observations for 100 individuals who have been measured twice, once after taking a placebo and once after taking a true treatment. It's always a good idea to use a placebo condition if we're giving people any type of drug. Simply taking a drug actually can result in true physiological changes. Placebo effects are not just in your head. Let's actually look in more detail about how this experiment might carry out. Here we have some population from which we take a sample of size n. Now for the first two weeks, individuals will be taking a placebo drug. So a drug that still comes in a bottle still looks like real medicine, but doesn't actually have any true active ingredient. At the end of the two weeks, we'll measure the blood pressure for these individuals. This will yield for this study 100 measurements on blood pressure. So from X1, the first individual, all the way up to X sub n. For the following two weeks, we'll actually provide these individuals with the real drug. They won't know that anything has changed because the medicine will look the same, but in this two-week period, they'll actually be on the active ingredient. Now, we'll measure the blood pressure at the end of the two weeks, which will give us a second set of measurements for each individual. Now, critically, the way this type of study will work is we'll be comparing each individual to themselves. That is, each person will be their own control. Notice that X sub 1 here, since we've measured them once after the placebo and once after the real drug, will give us a different score how much that drug made a difference for them. So this results in essence in difference scores for each individual. And it's the average difference score that we're concerned with. That is, the average amount that individuals differed between the times they were on a placebo and the times they were on the actual drug. Let's see how we can use our t-statistic to work with these data. Going back, here's our t-statistic in the general form. We always have our sample statistic minus a population parameter divided by the estimated standard error of the statistic. In this case, let me fill this in with words. The t would be equal to the sample difference score mean, that is the difference score we make for each individual and the mean across individuals, minus the population difference score mean divided by the estimated standard error of the difference score mean. Let's start filling this in. We already know the sample difference score mean we know that as x bar subscript d. That's just the mean of the difference scores for every individual. But next, we have the population difference score mean. Now, first, we haven't seen a population difference score mean in any of the diagrams I've shown you. And second, we wanted to do this type of test so that we wouldn't have to know a population mean before treatment. Remember, with the one sample t-test, we still needed to know a population mean. We don't want to have to do that for every type of study we run. So we want to get rid of that population difference score mean. Let's take a look at where that is. It's not going to be on this diagram, but like we did before, we have to consider the statistically analogous situation that we're trying to make an inference about. So let me restructure things. Here we have our population of size capital N. Remember, this is a very hypothetical study, so I'm actually going to draw in the little dotted lines here to make that clear. Imagine we take the entire population and give them the placebo for two weeks. Now we're gonna have a population after placebo still of size n. So imagine we have observations from x1 all the way to x capital N, every individual in the population measured in terms of blood pressure. Now imagine we give everybody in the population the active drug, and after two weeks, measure every person in the population on x1 through x sub n. So for every individual, we actually can calculate a difference score. Now here's where that population parameter comes into play. Imagine for every individual, we take a difference. That is, we end up with a population of difference scores. That is, for every individual, we have a difference score. And since this is every individual in the population, this is a population of difference scores. So that parameter won't be an x, it'll be a mu subscript d, that is the mean of a population of different scores formed before and after taking the drug, that is taking a placebo, then measurement, then taking the drug, then measurement. 
the difference of those for every individual will form this population of difference scores. So we can fill in that part of this equation, that is mu sub d. And our estimated standard error of the difference score mean, well keeping with our notation, is just s subscript x bar subscript d. We've actually entered into two levels of subscripting here. Now don't let all those subscripts make you think this is anything special. In reality, we're really just doing a test on the difference scores in our sample. In fact, if we compare this to the one sample hypothesis test using the t-distribution, let me click to that, this is our t-statistic for one sample, it really looks the same. The only thing I've done is added a d to everything in the equation. That is, we have x bar subscript d minus the mean of the population of different scores divided by the estimated standard error of the different score means. But remember, we wanted to do this type of study to get rid of the need to know a population mean. And right now, we still have a population mean in there. But remember, our t-statistic is formed by taking a difference between our observed sample statistic, in this case a difference score mean, minus the population mean if the null hypothesis is true. Because of the way we've structured this study, if the null hypothesis is true, that is, if there is no effect, we actually know what that population mean is before doing the study. This is something special. Let's go back to that diagram. Mu sub d is necessarily zero if there is no effect. Remember, if the null hypothesis is true, we're saying that whatever our treatment is, is no different than that placebo. That is, there's no actual effect of the drug. So if we have a population measured before and after taking a drug that does nothing, then that population mean, the population mean of the difference scores, is zero. There is no change between those two populations. So even before doing the study, we know what mu sub d is. It is necessarily zero. So our t statistic for dependent measures reduces down to this. The mean of the different scores in our sample divided by the estimated standard error of the different score mean. Now let's tackle that estimated standard error because that looks like something we haven't seen before, but in fact, it's very close to something you have seen before. Let me shift everything up there and let me show you the formula for the estimated standard error of the different score means. In fact, it's the square root of the variance of the different scores divided by n which looks incredibly similar to the way we would calculate a normal standard error, which is the square root of the variance estimate over n. In this case, let me add one additional piece, which is the degrees of freedom for our t-statistic. Again, we'll come back to degrees of freedom, but in this case, it's simply n minus one. But notice, n here refers specifically to the number of difference scores. In this study, we have 100 observations, which leads to 100 different scores, one for each individual, so our degrees of freedom is just 99. 